All right, Boker Tov. Today's stuff is Daf Ayin 70. Um, and um, we pick up in the middle of a discussion of a debate between um, a three way debate in the Mishnah, but well, Rabbi Yehud and Rabbi Meir will focus on about whether Malika of a bird that is a Nevela, that is a trefa, Malika of a Korban, um, does it become a Nevela or not? Um, so, um, since the Torah sort of accepts Malika, um, and Malika itself doesn't become the veil. What if the Malika doesn't work because the bird is a trefa, which is sort of similar to these other questions about other ways you can invalidate the Malika. Anyway, so Rebbe um, Mayer says that the bird is not a trefa, is not an avela, and uh, and um, Rebbe Huda says that it is an avela. And actually, um, there are really three opinions. Rebbe Huda actually would say that even the shechita, and this is one we're going to focus on. The shechita of a bird that is a trefa is an avela. Okay, everybody agrees that by a behema, right? There's two completely separate categories. Nevela didn't have a kosher. It didn't have a shechita, and trefa had a kosher shechita. The difference basically is that a nevela is tame and a trefa is not. Um, but um, by a bird, logically, you would assume it's the same thing. Once you're distinguishing these two categories, nevela and trefa, once so if by a by a cow, if you shecht it and it's a trefa, it's a trefa, not a nevela doesn't have to, but you would assume the same is true about a bird, okay? Um, before you even get, so so it would seem the most well, that it, you, it would seem that the most you would want to debate is Malika, because Malika is something mm -hmm. that under, nor, of, a, of, of a sacrifice, of a bird that's a sacrifice, because Malika under normal circumstances would make something in a day long. So that's where we could have an interesting debate. But Reb Yehuda goes so far, and we're really going to focus on Reb Yehuda here, to say that at, even the shita of a bird that's a trefa, it's tame, like in a day long. Where does it, as distinct from a cow. Where does he get it from? He gets it from a puzzle. Because the puzzle says, Asher to chal and veila utrefa v'tamei ero aref. Okay, and the Chazal say, it's talking about a tumor that comes through eating. So they say it's talking about a bird. It's not explicit in the verse. And he says, look, it says you eat a trefa, you're tamei. What do you want from me? It's this puzzle. <laughs> so a bird is different than other things, which is a very reasonable position. Okay, which leads the Gemara to then say, but one minute, it says veila and trefa elsewhere. And we don't always interpret that to mean literally a trefa. We interpret it for other purposes. Okay, where do we see that elsewhere that we interpret it for other purposes? So, for example, the Pasuk says, So, that, now, it is true that, it is true that both of these are, that this is true. You're not allowed to eat the chayla of a and the trefa. And the idea of lacha means that it's tahor. You can use it, it for even for kachim types of purposes. So the pasuk is literally. Yeah, true. How do you know that means for kachim? Because that's the way Chazal interprets it. That's the way that yaselochom lacha means it's tahor. That's the way Chazal. You could also say it means it's not asur da'ana. Let's talk about a, an animal, right? An animal. Okay. Don't have All right. The only question is whether we're trefa in the context of nevela and trefa literally means trefa or is coming to teach something else. So it could literally mean trefa here because it's true. You're allowed to, you're not allowed to eat the chaylav of an avail and a trefa. You can't even eat the chaylav of a shruta, okay? Um, but you, they are tahor. Even the only thing that's coming is the meat of an avail, not the chaylav. But the problem is, they, the Gemara says, is that if it literally means trefa, it suggests that only the fat is tahor and the animal itself is tameh, which is not true when you're talking about a, like a, you know, like a cow, okay? By a cow, a trefa, as we said, is not tameh. So the word trefa here cannot literally mean trefa because the implication is wrong. Okay, so therefore they say, what does the word what does the word trefa mean over here? The word trefa over here means to exclude a, to animals that have a category of trefa, which excludes the case of non-kosher animals. Trefa teaches you kosher animals because if it's a non-kosher animal, the mish mishiyesh would mean trefa. Exactly. Okay, and therefore. And because the idea that the chaylev that the that the chaylev is tahor is only true about kosher animals, non kosher animals, even the even the fat is tameh. Okay, so that's basically what the Gemara says. So since sometimes this word trefa means not literally trefa, it's coming to teach you something else. It's questioning Rabbi Yehuda's use of the word trefa in this puzzle. It's so fascinating. The Gemara's like upset that Rabbi Yehuda's reading the verse literally. <laughs> okay, because at the end of the day, that's what Rebbe is doing. He's saying the verse says a trefus causes trauma. All right, but when says no, trefus sometimes means something else, and therefore, how are you so sort of certain that's what it means there? Okay, is that a matter of debate? If I shech, I thought, I mean, I yes, thinking, that if I shech the cow, that's a trefa, it now is no longer an avela, the meat. No, that is not debate. Everybody agrees Everyone? by a cow that it is a trefa, not an avela. 
Okay, so now let's pick up at the top of Ayin and That's sort of some of the background, reviewing some of the background of yesterday. So the Gemara says, like, well, it's all custom about the bird. So the Gemara says, now, um, that's the zoo, she ain't so many shum, balto, chelev, and vela, and shum tamay. So the Gemara says, you don't need the word trefa in this case to come and teach you that we're only talking about kosher animals because the very fact that it says chelev nivela, okay, tells you only talking about kosher animals because nivela means a type of an animal that the status of nivela is, uh, is meaningful. And a nivela status is only meaningful for kosher animals. For non kosher animals, the status of nivela, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. Yes, nivela, no nivela. It's always us or anyway. Okay, so it's basically, again, we're not debating the law. We're just saying, don't tell me you use the word trefa to tell me kosher animals. Yesh gamino trefa. You could say essentially the same thing about nivela. Yesh gamino nivela. The concept of nivela is only relevant by kosher animals. Okay? Um, okay, so when it says don't eat it, it says don't eat it because it's chale. Okay, it does it so obviously we're talking about a kosher animal because a non kosher animal, right, you couldn't eat it anyway. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's chale. So, someone says, fine. So, you know what the word chale trefe here is coming to do? We already know it's kosher animals, not from trefa, but from the fact that it says, if it's chelev de vela, a cholo sohu. Don't eat it because it is, you know, it is coming from a nevela or whatever. It means that if it was coming, that if it's as opposed to a non kosher animal where the conversation wouldn't even start. So so we already know that we're talking about kosher animals from the word nevela. It suggests that nevela is the prime problem, and that would not be true if it was a non kosher animal. So, what does trefa come to teach you? Trefa is extra word comes to teach you that this applies even to the case of a chaya. Now, by a chaya, like a deer, the chaylev actually is, you're allowed to eat the chaylev. So here's an interesting question. You've got a dead deer, deer dry, you know, was hit in the street by a car. Okay? Take that the, happened to me once. I'm sure. You take the chaylev, okay? The, the deer itself, the meat of the deer, is a, is a tame, it's a novella. What's the story about the chaylev? So the Gemara is going to say, I would very, could very reasonably have thought but the chelev is also tamei. The chelev of a chaya is different mm-hmm. than the chelev of a cow. Why? Because since you're not allowed to eat the chelev of a cow, it's conceptually distinct from the meat. Mm-hmm. So the meat is tamei and the, and the chelev is not. By a deer, you're allowed to eat the chelev. Maybe the chelev should also be tamei. It should just be like the meat. So that's what the Gemara says. El hai trey for me by le la su chaya. That this fact that it's not tamei applies even to a chaya. So I would have had a very good hava I would have thought to say, that when is it that the chelev is not tamay? That's why when the chelev is distinct, when you're not allowed to eat it. By a deer where you're allowed to eat the chelev, so I would think that if you have a deer that's an aveva, the chelev is tamay. Kamash Milan. So the word trefa comes to teach you anything that has a trefa. Meaning, on the one hand, we're excluding non-kosher animals, where trefa is not meaningful. And on the other hand, we're including chaya. So the Gemara says, um, I'm a lay. So the Gemara says, you know what? That would be a very nice thing that the word might be teaching you. But it's such a good havamina that actually the havamina is right. Okay? It's such a good havamina that because <coughs> the chaylev of a deer is just like the meat, that actually then should be the halacha. That the chaylev mm-hmm. actually should be tamay. Okay? So the Gemara says, <coughs> Mamlei, majna, tmei, adeng, Why by a non-kosher animal, a pig, do we say that the fat is like the meat and the fat is tamay? Because they're both equally forbidden. So the same is true in the reverse by a chaya. So chaya nami, ein chaya The fat is not distinct from the meat. They're both equally permitted. So if that's true, that the fat and the meat are the same, they're permitted for consumption, if the meat is tamay by a deer, the chaylev actually should be tamay. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, you know, your havamina was so good that it actually is not just a havamina. The ode, haksiv, the acholo sochlu. The end of the verse says, don't eat the chaylev. So we can't be talking about a deer, because a deer, you're allowed to eat the chaylev. This verse that says it's not tamay is also saying that don't eat it, which isn't true by a deer. So it says, you can't tell me the word trefa is coming to include deer, because actually, you're wrong. A deer is not included in this verse. The fat of a deer actually, that's a nevela, actually is tamay. Okay? 
So the Gemara says, Amar ba, El Amar Bai, fine. But I'm going to tell you the word Trefa is coming to tell you something else. Trefa Gufe Itzrich. Actually, it's coming to tell you its own thing, meaning it is literal. It does mean a Trefa. But the problem we had was if it's literal in this verse, then why don't we imply, oh, only the Chalev is Tahor. That means that the meat is Tameh, which isn't true about a Trefa. So I was going to say, don't worry about the implication. Trefa is here to tell you for the purpose of it itself. What does that mean? Trefa l'gufei yitzrech. Shalot tomar ho v'tmei asur mechayim v'trefa asur mechayim. I might have thought that a trefa, that is, a, the chalev of a trefa is worse, is more tamei than the chalev of an avela. Why? Because a trefa is, is asur, the problems with a trefa start even while it's still alive, right? Even before you shecht it. It's, because it's already a trefa. What other animal is usher even before it's shechted, like you know it's going to be usher is a tmea, a non-kosher animal. So I might have thought the following. It's parallel to a tmea. So therefore, ma tmea b'chelba tamei. So the same way by a pig, the fat is tamei. Um, and maybe the defining characteristic here is, is that it's something that for, that status began even while it was alive. So I might have thought that a trefa, the fat, is tamay. So the reason it said here that a trefa, the fat, is tahor, does not say, oh, don't now go have a conniption and say, oh, that means that the meat is tamay. It's not true. The meat isn't tamay by a trefa. So why did it say here that the fat is tahor? So you shouldn't think that a trefa is like a non-kosher animal. And a non-kosher animal is tamay. Don't think that a trefa is tamay as well. Okay, got it? So the Gemara says, so then, one minute, so then you need it even in this Pasuk, right? Why don't you say the same thing? Why don't you say that since a non-kosher bird is forbidden while it's alive, and a trefa is forbidden while it's alive to be eaten. So the same way a non-kosher bird causes tumah, so a trefa, uh, excuse me, does not cause tumah when you swallow it. A trefa does not cause tumah when you swallow it. Okay, it's, which is like not a good point, which is like, okay. So I mean, the Gemara is saying that maybe that's the same purpose that the word trefa serves here. You would have thought what? This pasuk, okay, well, actually, here's the point, right? What is your, remember the Gemara says back here that Rabbi Yehuda says, but what is the that the word trefa is coming to tell you when you swallow the trefa of a not of a, of a bird your tame right? Mm-hmm. He means trefa literally. What is the other way of reading trefa? Does anybody remember the other way of reading trefa by a bird here? By the case if it doesn't literally mean the trefa of a bird causes tuma. But they're talking about nevela rather than Mish- just be Mish- 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 no. So what the Kumar says is the other way of reading this. If it does, is, say, is coming to say that this idea that a bird causes tuma when you swallow it. Is only going to be kosher and kosher bird. Kosher bird. A non-kosher bird will not cause tumor when you swallow it. That's what the word trefa is coming to tell you. You think okay. it'd be worse? If you, I, you would think. It'd be yeah. Worse. All right. Now, what the Gemara is saying is though is one minute. But based on your logic, we could say that actually the word trefa here is coming not to tell me we're only talking about kosher birds, but to come and tell me that the, you would exactly basically to tell me what Reb Yehuda thinks it's telling me. The same way you would you would have thought, look, a non-kosher bird doesn't cause tumor when I swallow it, so a trefa shouldn't, shouldn't cause tumor when I swallow it. But they're saying a trefa is like non-kosher. The status starts while it's alive. So the pasuk is coming to tell me, no, a trefa also causes tumor when you swallow it. So basically, what the gemara is going to say here is, you read trefa literally here, because I would have had a hava unit to say that the fat of a trefa is tame and compared it to kosher to non-kosher animals, and read trefa literally here. It gets you to a Reb Yehuda position. Okay? So the Gemara says, Shalot Omar, hold the of tamei, asur b'achila, v'trefa asur b'achila, ma of tamei in umetame, as trefa in umetame. So, okay, very nice. If you're going to say that the word trefa here is literal, because I had some havam that this wouldn't apply, then you're going to be back to a Reb Yehuda position here. Trefa should be literal. And swallowing a bird trefa should cause tumma. The ode. And anyway, says the Gemara, you don't need the pasuk to tell you, oh, uh, the chelav of a trefa is better than the chelav of a, of, a, of a pig. And I would have thought it's like a pig because they're both usher when they're alive. The Gemara says it's not a it's not a good comparison. 
a tummy, a, a pig never started life being kosher. Trefa heisela shasa kosher, and a trefa did, so I never would have compared it to a pig. Okay, bechitei ma trefa mi beten. What about an animal that was born as a trefa? But fine. Michael may mark, but seven has the minimum yaika. But okay, at least cows in general don't start their lives as a trefa. So I don't need, again, what the Gemara is saying is, I don't need the verse to tell me that the fat of a trefa is tahor. Because I know that the trefa itself is tahor. I don't need it to tell me the fat is tahor. And don't tell me I need it to tell me it because I would have compared a trefa to a non kosher animal. There's not a real good basis to compare it to a non kosher animal. It doesn't start off life as a general rule being forbidden. Okay, so therefore we're back to the question what is the word trefa teaching me? All right, what am I learning? <clears throat> I can't take it literally because that would imply that the meat is tame, which is not true. I can't tell me I need it because I would have thought to compare it to a non kosher animal. That's also not true. So, what is that word trefa coming to teach me? So El Amar Rav, so Rav, Rav rather says, um, um, Tatora Amra. So you know what Rav says? It's not about the fact. It's about the fact that, a tr uh, well, it is about the fact, but it's not about the fact that it's Tame or not Tame. It's about the fact that the fat of a trefa has both Isurim applying to it. Mm -hmm. If it says, Chelev Trefa, Acholo Sochluhu, okay, don't eat it as Chelev, but presumably also don't eat it as a trefa, and it's coming to tell you that both statuses apply. It is literal. It does mean trefa. Don't infer from here that the meat is tame. The emphasis here is not on the tame thing. It's true. By a by trefa, the meat is tahor. By a novella, the meat is tahor. The tame and the chelim is tahor. But the key of what the Pusk is teaching in why to in trefa, even though by trefa, even the meat is tahor, is because to tell you a cholo sofu. Amar el amar rava. Torah amar. Yavo iser novella, v'yachol iser chelim. That, yes, this is chelev, and it was chelev from the moment the animal was born. So it starts as an iser chelev, but now it died and it was not shechted. It's also an iser right, Exactly. It's about time to say iser chelev. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Yavo iser trev, yavo iser chelev. It needs to tell you both, because obviously this doesn't seem to actually fit. Generally, you would say, ain iser chelev iser. Maybe this is the source for the position, you know? It's not. So, okay. Tzricha, you need both. Iyash minu nevela mishum dimetama. So nevela is maybe a weighty iser because there's also tumah that comes with nevela. So maybe that's weighty enough to come on top of chela. Of a trefa, a love, a trefa maybe doesn't come on top of chela. Yes, I meaning trefa, mishum di sur mechayim. If it's a trefa, that's because trefa has more, more weighty in a different way. It starts while the animal is still alive. Of a nevela, aim a love, tzricha, but maybe not a veil. It has to tell you both. So what have we said? It doesn't say why because it really doesn't should it work. But the aim is for is a principle. But anyway, what we're saying is the following. Rabbi Yehuda again says that treif in this bird by birds is literal. And therefore, if you swallow a bird that's a treif that, that's, that you slaughtered, it causes too much. Well, you know that's only by birds. Right. Okay. The Chazal just tells right. Now, Rabbi Yehuda, then the uh, response is no, treif can sometimes mean something else, not literal. It can mean we're talking, talking about kosher birds, not non kosher birds, etc. Now we're saying, okay, let's actually ask that question. What does treif mean? Is it literal in some of these psukim? So this puzzle, Kalev Mvela and Trefa, we're saying it can't really be literal because that suggests that the meat is tame, and that's not true by a Trefa. So the Gemara goes around, crashes around with a couple of possibilities, and in the end it says it is literal. But don't worry yourself that, oh, it implies the meat is tame. The meat is tahor by, 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 by a Trefa. So why is Trefa being mentioned if even the meat is tahor? To tell you the end of the puzzle, to tell you that even though this is, this is this is chelev, it also is usher as a trefa. Even though it's chelev, it's also usher as an aveva. Okay, and that's why trefa here is literal for the end of the pasuk. And that's the, and the question here by the bird, the debate of Reb Yehuda and his interlocutor, like that, is mm -hmm. whether <laughs> is whether trefa is here he, by the bird is literal or not. So how do we know that we can? Further differentiate between Malika and Shechita. Maybe the bird, even if you shechted, it, would be the same. Right. That was that, that we discussed yesterday about uh, about whether how you move from Shechita to Malika. That's based on a Mamatina or a Pasuk, and Rabbi Yossi challenges that. Okay, but now we're at the earlier stage. Okay, okay. So that was still applied. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, now, uh, Rabbi Meir, high tray for my Lay. Finally, so Rabbi Yehuda says that. Um, uh, uh, that this, wait a minute, let me get to make sure I'm knowing which trade we're talking about. Yeah, it's this one by the bird. Um, one minute. Yes. 
Uh, yes, this trefer, which is the why we're having this whole discussion, that Reb Yehuda says is literal, okay, that, and therefore the a bird that's a trefer causes tuma. Reb Meir, who says that a bird that's a trefer does not cause tuma by comparison to the large animals, what does he do with this word trefer? Okay, now again, we've already suggested this word trefer to tell you it's limited to kosher birds, not non kosher birds, okay, but anyway, we'll get back to that, okay? So, what does he do with the word trefer if he doesn't read it literally by birds? Okay, to tell you that, remember, of these things, right? Oh, did I erase some of it? Unfortunately, I erased it. Okay, but if you remember, right, maybe I'll just rewrite this. Right? What are the cases where of Malika, right? We, we, you know, remember what a Malika, when it, when, it's, when it is Tahor, when it is not an Avela, right? It has to be, you did a Malika, you did the right act, yeah. right? It could be Psulin, that's true. That could be the exception, but it was the right act of Kudshim, Okay, which is the right object, as it were, is in the right yes. place. Okay, that's what that's when it's not. It, now, now, um, now, what if uh, similarly, if it is shita of chuvin isnim or of kudshim, whatever bachutz or isnim, all of those cases is not an avela because basically here because. It's shrita, it's not malika. Okay? What is a nevela? What is a nevela is if it's not malika, let's say it's mikat sakin. So that's the wrong act. Or if it is chulin, malika of chulin, okay, wrong object. Or if it is malikas kachim bachutz, wrong place. Okay, that's okay. Plus, what else is, what else makes it a Nivela? The other thing that makes it a Nivela is if it is Malikat um, Kudshim, or whatever, even a Fulim, but even Kudshim, well, I guess that's implicit here, okay? Malikat Kudshim Bachot. Okay, fine. Anyway, fine. We did okay. that. Okay, we did it, right. That's top. implicit here. No, oh, we did Bachot. Am I forgetting anything here? Because yes, I'm not sure. Okay, anyway. So that's it. Now, of course, the question becomes, and this is important to remember this, because what Rebbe Yehud, because what Rebbe Meir comes to do, Rebbe Meir is a chiddush. It's one thing to say shchita of a bird that's a treifa is not metame. But Rebbe Yehud says even malika of a bird that is a treifa is not metame. And for example, the Gemara had a bright. Uh, it doesn't seem like this is going from Rebbe Meir. The Gemara had a bright. You know what's also included in the wrong object? Included in the wrong object, Mer said, was mechuser aver, okay, or chicken, obviously, or something that is like too old or too young. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. So you would think, right, that a trefa would fall in the wrong object category, right? Mm -hmm. So well, yeah. no, because it's the right mechuser. Well, well, I guess so, but no, but chicken is edible. Because, you know, I understand. Like, you, I'm not you, saying not necessarily, but if these types of things, right, make it make it, it's considered like a malika and if not like a, a nevela. So anyway, that's what you'd be inclined to think. Anyway, Rabbi Yehuda says no. It doesn't matter at all. Internal. It's not a balmum. It's whatever, and it's not. So it's not like a kudsha problem. Whatever it is. Anyway, Rabbi Yehuda says it's not. An, Rabbi Meir says it's not an avela. Rabbi and whatever. And Rabbi Yossi says it is an avela. Certainly, the Malika case is an avela, even if in general he agrees by the sheet of a trefa. Okay. So now the Gemara says. Okay, let's get back to the Gemara. So the Gemara says. So what do you do with the word Rabbi Meir? Rabbi Meir disagrees with Rabbi Yehuda and says that. Um, that it is not tame, even Malik is not tame. Hi trefa mayabile. What does he do by the trefa word by over there by the bird? So the Gemara says, um uh Mayabile Okay, so remember we said this. So the fact that it says Nivela Utrefa, what we learned to tell if you remember is how did we learn that Shritas Khulin Bifnim? How did we learn that that is not it not tame? Because we said it compares it because of the word trefa. Do you remember this from yesterday? 
That's the same way something that has to be equal inside and outside causes tumah. But shechitas chul and bachutz is acceptable. Mm-hmm. So therefore, since it's not the same time. inside and outside, it does not fall into this tame category. And therefore, shechitas chul and bifnim does not cause tumah. So the word trefa is not coming to tell me literally a trefa bird. That's not true, according to Rabbi Meir. It's coming to tell me inside and outside have to be the same, which is where I learned that Shvitas Chulin Bifnim is actually going to be Tahor and not Tame. Yes. Uh, Chulin Ba'azara is a rabbinic prohibition? Yeah. So it shouldn't affect? That's true. I mean, based on how you think about Chulin Ba'azara, is a question why you even needed a verse for this. Because if Chulin Ba'azara is rabbinic, that's true. Okay. <coughs> Rabbi Yehuda Trefa Chulinixi. Now, where does Rabbi Yehuda learn this principle? That Shvita Bifnim is okay, that it has to be the same inside and outside of the problem? Because it says Nevela and Trefa twice. Once it says, Asher Tuchal Nevela and Trefa Vatamera Arev. And another Pazuk says, Nevela and Trefa Lo Yochal Vatama Va. Okay? So therefore, it says trefa twice, once to teach me, we're talking about literally trefa, and once to teach me this halacha of inside and outside. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Meir, who's, what does Rabbi Meir do with the two trefas? Okay, that gets back to what we said before. So one trefa is coming to tell me this halacha, that a nevela causes tumor when you swallow it, a bird nevela, it's only by kosher birds, okay, only by something that trefa is relevant. The other trefa teaches me this halacha that tum is only when it's the same inside and outside, and that chitos chulin bifnim is does not cause tuma. Okay, so for Rebbe Meir, you learn two things from the word trefa, neither of which are li- the literal meaning of trefa. One thing is that we're only talking about kosher birds, and the other thing is that the tum is only when it's the same inside and outside, as opposed to chulin bifnim. Okay, Rebbe Yehuda says at least one of those trefas I'm going to use literally to tell you that this tuma is caused by a bird that's a trefa. Uh, you got, your sympathy has got to be with Rebbe Yehuda, i got to tell you. <laughs> okay, so the Gemara yeah. says, okay, um, Rebbe Yehuda, I mean nevela nafkale. This is what we said before. Rebbe Yehuda knows to exclude a non-kosher bird from the word nevela. Also, nevela is something that's only relevant to kosher birds, not to non-kosher birds. Mm-hmm. So I already know we're only talking about kosher birds. Rebbe Meir, hi nevela my obviously. So what does Rebbe Meir do with the nevela? L'shir achila to tell you how much of a bird causes tumah, the amount that would be assert if for eating it as an avela, which is a kazayas. So when you swallow a kazayas of the bird, you're tamay, and we learn that from the word nivela, because that's the amount, the size that's meaningful for an avela. Um, so it says, but one minute, it says, you know, it says, don't eat. It says, so since it just says, it says asher tochal v'tamei, or it says lo yochal l'tamava. So that should tell you that the amount that causes tuma, the same way it's the act of eating that causes tuma, that should tell you the amount that causes tuma is the normal amount of eating. It's a kazayis. Okay. So mid after b'lach shachila. No, chad l'shir achila b'kazayis. Chad l'shir achila b'chdei achilas pras. You need to tell me twice the idea that it's like achila. Once from the word nevela and once from the word achila. Once to tell you the minimum amount, which is a kazayis, causes tuma. And the other is to tell you it only causes tuma if you eat it in the normal way halacha defines eating, which is eating the kazayis within the amount of time it takes you to eat half a loaf of bread. Mm-hmm. Okay? Why would I have thought this is different? But, um, yeah. Because since it's a since it's a chiddish that tuma is caused by eating, so maybe it's eating is defined in different ways. Maybe as long as that amount goes down your throat, it doesn't matter how long it takes you. So Yotzim yeah, Mutechil is not cool eating. Time. It takes you too long. Well, I understand. Yeah, I know. It's true. I was thinking the same thing. Then it's, you know, maybe, but maybe that's the point. Maybe the point is, Tuma is caused by this going down your throat, not by a Ma'aser Achila. That's what I would have thought. says Yochal. I know. Okay, what can I tell you, Michael? Kamash Malad. Okay. I was, I was so like, anyway, so the point is, all these different things, and the bottom line is, right, Yehuda reserves one use of the word trefa to tell you it's literal. And that, a, uh, that even a bird that's a trefa causes tuma. And Rabbi Meir says, I'm just going to learn a lot of other stuff from it. I'm going to learn only talking about kosher birds. I'm going to learn it has to be the same inside and outside. I'm going to learn, you know, from the word nevela, I'm going to learn that it has to be the size of a kezayis or kezayis b'chechidas pras, etc., etc. Okay. So now the Gemara says like this. Tadar Abanan. The chel of nevela of the chel of trefa. The chel of and finally now we're shifting back to this pasuk, but now we're starting a little bit fresh. Okay, don't eat the chel of the nevela and the trefa, but they do not cause tumah. 
Okay, the chayla beim b'tarah kasev b'dabim. We're talking about chayla of a kosher animal. Atomer b'chayla beim b'tarah kasev b'dabim. The chayla of a kosher animal. Oein al b'chayla beim b'tmeya. Maybe the chayla of a non-kosher animal. Amarta tier michal shchita shchuta v'tier michal chayla. No, because the cure is saying that. Um, one, let me just check Rashi here. Okay, so here we're saying that chelev is tahor, and we also know that if you shecht an animal, it is tahor, the meat is tahor, right? So we have two, we, two, we know two things about, we know that there are two ways in which the meat, in which something is tahor of an animal. The chelev is tahor, and if you shecht it, it's tahor, okay? So tiher michla, where are we? Tiher lola, tiher michla shchita, shchuta, but tiher michla chelev. We know when you, what is the case when you shecht an animal that it's tahor, that's tahor of a little bit meo. We know that the only meat of an animal that's tahor is a meat of a kosher animal. Okay? So that, if that's true, after shatir michla chelev, tahor of a little bit meo. So similarly, when we're talking about the chelev of an animal being tahor, we're talking about that of a kosher animal. Okay? So meaning the point is here, it says chelev is tahor. Remember we said before that it's only the chelev of a kosher animal that's tahor. The chelev of a non-kosher animal is tameh. Okay, logically the reason is because the chelev, because since you're not allowed to equally eat both the meat and the chelev, it's all like the same thing. The meat and the chelev is all the same. So the fact that the chelev is tahor is only by a kosher animal, not by a non-kosher animal. But this bright is questioning that. How do we know that? And the answer is, well, look, when it comes to the meat being tahor, when is the meat of an animal tahor? The meat of an animal is tahor only by a kosher animal, not by a non-kosher, when you shecht it. So here, even though we're not talking about shechting, when we're going to say a piece of it is tahor, we're only talking about kosher animals, not about non-kosher animals, okay? So that's how we know the chelev here is only talking about kosher animals. That would be one argument, but you can make another argument, okay? Well, you could say like this, oh, klach lederch zo, or go this way, follow this path. Tiyar michlal nevela v'tiyar michlal chelev. Okay, that um, that there are some types of things that are kosh that are not tame as a nevela. What types of things are not tame as a nevela? We just said it before. You said it. We all said it was ironic. Anybody know what animal is not tame as a nevela? Kosher. A kosher no, cow is uh, is tame as a nevela. A non kosher. A non kosher pig is tame as a nevela. There's one animal that's not tame as a nevela. We just said it a minute ago. A non kosher bird. This strange halacha that a bird causes tuma, right? Remember, one of the things we learned from this whole thing, this whole halacha mm-hmm. that a non a bird causes tuma when you swallow it is only kosher birds. So you actually have an irony that normally non kosher animals cause more tuma, mm-hmm. right? Even if you shecht a non kosher animal, it causes tuma. Even if the, if a chelev of a non kosher animal causes tuma, that's what we're sort of saying. But you have one case where a non kosher animal doesn't cause tuma. A non kosher bird. If you swallow it, it does not cause tumah. It's only by kosher birds, okay? Mm-hmm. So the Gemara is saying, if we're going to say chelev is tahor, does that apply even to non-kosher animals? So the first argument is, no, that doesn't make sense. Non-kosher animals are always more tamay. Even if you shecht a non-kosher animal, it's tamay. So therefore, certainly the chelev should be tamay. This doesn't apply to non-kosher animals. The other argument, wait, there's a case where non-kosher animals actually are better, are tahor, the case of birds. So therefore, maybe the idea that the chelev is tahor should apply to non-kosher animals as well, okay? But what's chelev for a bird? I know it's not, but just the general concept that non-kosher animals, you're right, you could say, what did birds have to do with these things? That's yeah. true. But it doesn't matter, <clears throat> the general concept. So we don't know when the Torah is saying chelev is okay, whatever, not tame, mm-hmm. does it also mean non-kosher animals? Logic would say no, only kosher, because non-kosher animals are always more tame. You shech the pig, it's tame. Okay, but the says, wait, the bird case has non-kosher animals being less tame. Okay? Oh, klakli der or go this way. Tir michlal nevela, but tir michlal chele. There are some non-kosher animals that are tahor as a nevela. Okay, and the Torah here is saying chele is tahor. So why don't I say, makisha tir michlal nevela, but tmei velo tahora. The same way when it's saying that certain dead animals are tahor, which means dead birds are tahor, is non-kosher animals. Maybe I'll say this person is only talking about non-kosher animals. So only, only non-kosher birds are tahor. Maybe only chelev of non-kosher animals are tahor. Maybe I'll come with a position that non-kosher animals are less of a tumor problem. 
okay? So you've got the world of, you've got the world of, let's say, you know, whatever, mammals, right? You've got the world of like, you know, cows and sheep and whatever, right, et cetera, and goats, you know, and then you've got pigs and what else can we put there? What are the other non kosher animals? I don't know. Anyway, pigs is the only thing that comes to mind. Anyway, so in <laughs> this world, okay, in this world, if you do, if you have a shkita, if you shaft an animal, right, this is tame and this is tahor. And it's only by nevela, right, that they're both tame. So if you would look at this chart and you would say, okay, and we have a puzzle here that says chalev is going to be tahor. You'd assume that the chalev goes into the kosher column, not into the non-kosher column, right? Mm -hmm. So that's chalev. But if you look at this world, the world of birds, so you've got a pigeon here and a chicken and a duck, that's in the kosher column. What do you have in the non-kosher column? What's some non-kosher birds? The vulture. The eagle, vulture, eagle, eagle. Okay. Here you have the halacha that if you eat eat a dead eat it when it's dead, bizarrely, this is tame and that's tahor. Weird. So here when the Torah says chalev, although it's true, it's talking about a chalev of a mammal. But if I don't know, is the Torah talking here about kosher animals or non-kosher animals when it's telling me tahor? If I look at the top, if I look here, I'm going to say it's talking about kosher animals because those are more tahor, right? If I look down here, I'm going to say it's talking about non-kosher animals because in the bird world, non-kosher animals are more tahor. So, all right. So the Gemara says, uh, So maybe here we're saying chelev is tahor. I should say that we're talking about tame animals because at least in the world of birds, tame animals are more tahor. Amarta, so now you say, so I like the, it, it keeps this imagery of go on this path. If you go on this path, you'll come to the conclusion that we're talking about kosher animals. If you go on this path, you'll come to the conclusion we're talking about non-kosher. When you go on this path, it's tahor. When you go on the other path, you, talk, you learn out that you're talking about non-kosher animals. This case of chelev. It sort of brings up that classic case in the Gemara about there's two paths you know, and one of them has tuma under it and one of them doesn't, and you don't know which path you went on, right? So anyway, so here you have two paths you can go. You go on this, this path and say the chaylev is talking about kosher animals, or you go on the bird path, and again, we're not talking about birds, we're talking about chaylev, but at least learn from the bird paths and say that the chaylev is talking about non-kosher animals. So which way? So you don't know which way. You were just doing logic. So Talmud Lamar, so the verse teaches, trefa. That's what the word trefa, why the word trefa is needed. This gets back to the idea here. You need the word trefa to teach you not literally trefa, but that we're only talking about kosher birds. Mishyesh b'mina trefa. We're talking about things that trefa is not, right? It's relevant to. Okay. Otsi yes, atzmea she'en b'mina trefa. I'll exclude atzmea that does not have trefa. Lo otsi et achaya shiyesh b'mina trefa. Oh, wait a minute. Not this trefa. Excuse me. I jumped back down the bird. The trefa here, we're talking about chela. So what is the trefa here coming to tell me? This we said this point also. The trefa is coming to tell me that um, that we're only talking about kosher animals, only animals that have that have a type of a trefa. So this chayla is coming to genuinely say yes, we're in this category. We're only talking about kosher animals, not non-kosher, because of the word trefa tells me go on this path, go on the path, you know, not the pig path, <laughs> go on this path, go on the path of animals that have. That have a, a concept of trefa. Okay, so that's how I know that. Tamluma trefa, nishish bimina trefa, oti at the tmea, shame bimina trefa. The low oti at the chaya, shish bimina trefa. So now the Gemara says, okay, but now we get to the question of the deer. Remember, we discussed mm -hmm. the deer before, mm -hmm. and we actually said that logically by the deer, the chaylev should be tame, because the, you're allowed to eat the chaylev, so it should be like the meat, right? But maybe, but maybe the word trefa should come to include deer, because deers have trefa. So, mm -hmm. All right, so now we have to, what's the story with a deer? So the Gemara says, So it's, I'm sorry, I, I'm, okay. Tamlova trefa, mi sheish bimina trefa, period. Now the, now the brighter continues, three lines from the top. Oti yasa tmeya sheish bimina trefa, velo oti yasa chai sheish bimina trefa. Maybe I should only exclude pigs. Maybe I shouldn't exclude deer, because deer actually do have trefa relevant. 
okay? But we know that deer are excluded because deer, the chalev, is the same, because the, like to the meat, because you can eat the meat, chalev. Tamad lomar, v'acholo sochluhu, mi shechel ba'asr b'sara mutar, yatza chayel chayel shechel ba'asra mutar. So v'acholo sochluhu tells you you're only talking about the animals in which the meat, the fat cannot be eaten. If the fat can be eaten like a deer, then the, then, then the fat is not treated as distinct from the meat, and the fat does cause tuma. So you got it? So here we have chelev does not cause tuma. What are we talking about? Are we gonna learn from birds? Are we gonna learn from the larger animals? We're we gonna learn from the larger animals because of the word trefa, something that trefa is relevant. So the chelev of a, of a kosher animal does not cause tuma, but it's only of a behemoth. The chelev of a deer does cause tuma. Why? Because the chelev can be eaten. It's like the meat. It's not only logic, it's because the verse says, the verse is telling you that we're only talking about animals whose fat is forbidden. A deer whose fat is permissible, the chelev actually does cause tuma. Okay, now what we're going to do is, remember, I spelled out the meaning of this sprite that was talking about birds, when it says there's some type of an animal that the nevela is actually, of a non-kosher animal is actually tahor. So I told you that's talking about birds, but that wasn't explicit in the bright. There was a very bizarre line in the bright until I explained it. It's not because I'm genius, it's because I read the end of the Gemara. Okay. <laughs> or actually because I read Rashi, who told me what the end of the Gemara was going to say. But now the Gemara is going to try to figure that out. What did that bright mean when it said, wait, there's some type of non-kosher animals that the Nevela is talking about? Really? So the Gemara says like this. I'm going to Rav Yaakov Bar Abba le Rava. So Rav Yaakov Bar Abba said to Rava, Elamiata, <clears throat> So he says, I don't understand what the Brighta said that it said an avail of a non kosher animal is tahor. What the heck do you mean an avail of a non kosher animal is tahor? The avail of a pig is tahor? Are you kidding me? What does that mean? So I'm going to let, he said back to him, Kama Save Shavishtu. How many elders have got, have you know confused things? Like you're such a great and senior rabbi, I'm surprised you couldn't understand what that Brighta meant. Say for us on Linavelas Oftame. The end where it's saying that there's an avela of a non-kosher animal that's the whore, it means in the bird world. In the bird world, ironically, an avela of a non-kosher bird is the whore. Okay, Phew. we are done with that. Now, what we get to spend the end time doing is, of this breita, is looking back at Rebbe Mayer's basic position. Rebbe Mayer's basic position is, even the malika of a bird that is a trefa is not going to make it tamay. Okay, right? That was Rebbe Mayer's position. Right? Go back to that basic point. So, even though you did Malika. Now, looking back here, there's a lot of ways if you do Malika wrong, it is Tamei. It does become an Avela. And what's most relevant for us are things like if you do it on Hulin, or you do it on uh, missing a limb, or a chicken, or too young, or whatever it is. So, there's a good reason to think that if it was a trefa and not kosher as a sacrifice, that would also make, even if normally shechit of a treifa bird is not tamay, to think that malik of a treifa bird is tamay. And nevertheless, Rabbi Meir says no. So now we want to know how far is Rabbi Meir going to push it, that if you do malika on the wrong type of bird, it's still not going to be tamay. All right? It's not going to be an available. So let's take a look. Um, I'm Rabbi Yochanan. Lo tia Rabbi Meir el It was only by animals that did not have a blemish. So at least externally, whatever, it looked like it would be a kosher korban, and you only found out afterwards that it wasn't. So that enough put it in the category of right object that the malika does not make it a nevela. Of Abibali Mumin, if it has a physical blemish, which presumably by bird means like it's missing a limb, lo, he would not say it. We had a bright that explicitly said, we don't know if the bright that was Rebbe Mayer. But like if it's a, it has a missing a limb, it's out of the Corbin category, it's out of the right object category, and in that case, it actually is an Avela. All right? So mm -hmm. Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Lezer, or Afila Babali Mumin, nope. Once Rabbi Meir says even a trefa is considered the right object and it's not a Nevela, even a Balmum is considered the right object and it's not a Nevela. Which makes sense. Well, it makes sense that they're compared, but yeah. it's getting a little bit extreme. Yeah. And now the Gemara is going to make it even more extreme. Um uh Nam, he was also taught Amara Bibi Amar Rebel Lazar, Mitar Hayy Rebi Mayor Bivale Mumin, he would say even if it's got a blemish, it's not an Avela. Um this uh Malika Vafilu Avazin Bitarnagolin, even by ducks wow. and chicken. Now that already doesn't make so much sense, right? <laughs> so basically what Rebbe Mayor is learning from his principle that according to this, that a malik on a trefa is not an Avela, 
is that Malika, even on the wrong object, is not an Avela. Is not an Avela, meaning it has to probably be sanctified. You know, when you sanctify your chicken as a korban, it really doesn't have, it really like, you know, obviously it can't ever be brought as a korban. Presumably, <coughs> he still agrees to this principle of chulin. If you did a Malika on a non-sanctified bird, but he seems to be saying once you sanctify it as a korban, no matter how messed up it is, it's a trefa, it's a balmum, it's a chicken, whatever it is, okay, it's still the malika is not going to make it an avela. Yes. A, a sanctified bird that's not able to be brought on the altar, wouldn't that be for better compile? Yes, it would be. Yeah. Or, you know, you transfer the, the kedusha, whatever. But yes, yeah. I mean, yes, okay. But anyway, but that's surprising, right, that even that kedusha that was never fit to be kedusha's korban because mm -hmm. you sanctified a chicken, Nevertheless, for him, that's enough to what do you call it? To um, to say to say right, that Malika category. is not an available. Yeah. Okay. Now, by Reb Yirmiya, Reb Yirmiya asked the following question. Once we're talking about this, is that it could be way off and still not be an available for Rebbe Mayer? He wants to know about another case where you break something's neck from behind. What thing do you break its neck from behind? The uh, Egla Rufa, exactly. So by Reb Yirmiya, Reb Yirmiya asked, "Our of A's model instead of using a." Uh, an eggla, a, uh, a calf, a young cow. Let's say you took like a, uh, you know, a, uh, a ram, right? Um, so what would be the story? Is that A's? Yeah, yeah, yeah a ram, ram, right? How's it translated, oh. right? A, uh, isn't it, is it a goat? A, a goat, right, right, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Ayo, excuse me, no, a goat. I'm sorry, a goat, right. Um, if you, right. Um, um, Izim, of course, Izim, my time. Okay, I don't know. Okay, sorry. If you go ahead and you and you break the neck of a goat, so what is the story? Okay, now it means that he presumably assumes, which the Gemara is going to reveal in a minute, that he presumably pres he, he presumes that when you break the neck of an Egla Rufa, it's not an Avela. That is a fascinating question. When I break the neck of an Egla Rufa, does it have too much Avela? Do we say similar to Malika? that when you kill it in the way the Torah tells me to kill it, that takes it out of the Nevela category. Even though, right, by as opposed to the bird sacrifice, the breaking of the neck makes it usable. Usable to put on the altar, usable to be eaten. So there, there's a logic to say the breaking of the neck makes it not a Nevela. By an egg la rufa, the point is you break it in the neck and you, do, you use it for a ritual, but it doesn't make it used for anything, usable for anything. You leave it there, right? So we have no evidence that the breaking of the neck makes it more, somehow fit to be used. But nevertheless, <coughs> I do assume that since the Torah mandates the breaking of the neck, that it is going to be a uh, not an avela. And now he wants to know, so according to Rebbe Mayer, if you do malika on a chicken that you sanctified, it's not a nevela. What if for the egg la rufa, you used a goat and you broke the neck of a goat? Right, would that, what would be that for? Would that be an avela or not, okay? So, so of course there's a little bit of a difference because even in the chicken case, you sanctified it, you brought it to the, well here, you brought it to the wadi, but the Beit HaMikdash is a defined place, mm -hmm. right? Which wadi you're gonna use for egg la rufa is not a defined place. So what's to define that what I did with my goat was not just some like animal torture in a wadi, what's to define it as an act of egg la rufa? Here at least you have the base of Mikdash, it is sanctified, you know, it's being done by a Kohen, right? The Malik has to be done by a Kohen, right? So there you could say you have all of that, even though it's a chicken, it's still a Malika and it's still not an Avela. But what he says, what about if you used a goat for Egla Rufa? Well, you don't have the same fully, I mean, yeah, you do have a ritual, you have all the Zakanim coming down, but nevertheless, it's not exactly the same as a fully defining context, okay? What would be the story there? Would that be an Avela or not? So, so Yotzim Rav Dimi. So what does it say? So uh, let's go to the end. So um, so by Rabbi Yirmiyah. So Rabbi Yirmiyah, who always asks these types of questions, you know, right? He always wants to know one leg inside fifty yama, one leg outside fifty yama. <laughs> so by Rabbi Yirmiyah, Rabbi Yirmiyah asks, "Our of A is Mahu. What about if you did an eggla roof and you used a goat? A vozim b'turn a golden time a mai. Do we know the oldest one? Why by chickens does it work?" To say that it's still not an avela because at least they're birds. It's the aval a is the lav minahu, but a goat and a cow are completely different types of animals. Okay, lav mina the eglani. Oh, dear, what do we say? Mina the behemahu. It might not be a type of a cow, but it's still a type of a mammal. You know, same way, on the same way, right? So anyway, so that's what we want to know. What would be that story? So yes, so he wants to know: Is it significantly similar or different? I want to say to me the bigger question is. 
is that you don't have the same defining context as you do by the case of the bird. But the Gemara first wants to uncover the hidden assumption here. The hidden assumption that an Egla Rufa is not an Avela, which is fascinating in itself. Mm-hmm. The Rav Dimi was telling this over. said in one minute, are, is the assumption here that an Egla Rufa is Tahor, is not an Avela? Again, even though the Torah says break its neck, as opposed to the Malik of a bird, it doesn't say that it makes the bird the, the calf usable for something. So Amale, in, yes, Ami de Rav Yanai, they say in the Azur Yanai, Kaparaksi Bekikotchim. By the Egla Rufa, it says, Kaper la Amcha Yisrael, atone for your people Israel. So since it treats it as an act of atonement, we're looking at as it as a pseudo korban. Right, so that's fascinating. How do you look at the Egla Rufa? Do you sort of say, you know, um, we're killing this because it's sort of like in place of, of, of executing the murderer, or we're killing this to remind us of the innocently spilled blood, right? Or do you say, you know, I mean, it uses the elders, it does not use Kohanim, so it seems like it's more of a judicial thing of like blood is on our hands, right? That seems to be the idea. And you atone for us because by owning our responsibility that the bloodshed was our, you know, negligence, you know, that just should bring about a form of atonement. On the other hand, you're doing a ritual killing of an animal, which sounds and a lot like a korban. So that how much do you think of Egla Rufa as a type of a korban? Even though it's outside the base of Mikdash. So the Gemara is here saying, since it says atone and kaper, it's enough like a korban to basically say the same way the malika of a bird in the korban context is not a nevela, the breaking of an, ex- of an egla rufa is also not a nevela. Yes. Is the seer the zazel to right. me? <laughs> right. That's a good question, too. Okay. I don't know. Mazim, it's a good question. When you throw the seer off the cliff, whatever. Mazim of Nasan, Abu Adrav Yehuna, Bar Nasan, whatever. I'm going to challenge this idea that an Egla Rufa is not an Avela. Because what is the story, when, okay, about this thing that is Tahor? So the Brightness says like this, I only know that the Chelev, uh, let me do it again, I only know that the Chelev of an Avela that's Tahor is the type of a Chelev that is, you're allowed to get benefit from. You can't eat, but you can get benefit from. Because that's the Pasuk about, yeah, also, which is, it's Tahor, and you can get benefit from it. Chelev Shashar Nisla Vegla Rufa, how about the fat of a Shashar Nisla Vegla Rufa? Which the assumption here is that it's an Avela, not only is it an Avela, because it's an Egla Rufa or a Shoranisko, okay, you can't derive benefit from it. So since this Pasuk of Yeh does not apply to it, which tells you you can derive benefit, maybe I should say that the Chelev actually should be Tamei, not Tahor. How do I know that that's also Tahor? Tamud Omar, Kol Chelev. Okay, so because of the word of Kol Chelev, you treat it all the same, even the Chelev of an Egla Rufa is Tahor. Okay, but now we've got a problem. The fact that you have to tell me the Chelev of an Egla Rufa is Tahor implies what about the meat? That the meat is Tamei, right? Yeah. If you have to tell me the Chelev is Tahor, which is what this bright is telling me, presumably the meat is Tamei. Mm-hmm. But you just got to be telling me that the meat of an Egla Rufa is Tahor. Okay? The Esau could I take Egla Rufa to Raih, Egla Rufa, because you did the right ritual and it's a, like a korban or whatever it is. If the meat is Tahor. He Tahor of the Chelba Tamei? So why do you, I would never have thought that the fat would be Tamei. Of course the fat is Tahor. Why do you need a Pasuk? Why do you need this brighter to teach me the fat is tahor if the meat itself is tahor? So the Gemara says, "Look, hey, chad arif me arif lo If you did the right ritual, you don't need the pasuk to tell me this. If you did the right ritual and broke the neck, even the meat is tahor. And then, of course, the chelav is tahor. Okay, ki itzrich. Why do you need the? When do you need the pasuk to tell me the chelav is tahor? Meaning, when would the meat be tamei? Hey, chad shachta mishcha. You took this egla rufa and instead of breaking the neck, you shechted it. Okay, so in that case, since you did the wrong ritual, so there I might think that the chelev is tamei. The Gemara says, wait, even if you did the wrong ritual, since you shechted it, the meat is still tahor. The Gemara says, one minute, for the hanili shechita letar mitei nevela, that's not, doesn't make sense, because that's not a case where the meat is tamei. No, lutzricha shemesa. Okay, no, here's the case. If you took this down and you broke its neck, because you did the right ritual, it's all tahor. Mm-hmm. If you shechted it, because you shechted it, it's all tahor. But there's a case by the Egla Rufa where the meat is tamei. What is it? You brought it down into the wadi, you were going to break the neck, and before you got a chance to break and the neck, it. it dropped dead on you. So there it's a nevela. 
and there the, the, it's Tame. And there I might have thought that even though a normal Nevela, the Chelev is Tahor, maybe this Nevela, the Nekla Rufa, the Chelev is Tame. And therefore it has to tell you even here the Chelev is Tahor. So the Gemara says, Michlal de Mechaim Asura, one minute. If you're saying that if it died, it has a status of, a, of an Egla Rufa that's forbidden in on the eye, even if it dropped it on its own. I would have normally thought, when does the status of Egla Rufa that's forbidden in benefit kick in? When you do the when ritual do of the ritual. breaking the neck. So if it dropped that on its own, what makes it an Egla Rufa? What makes it forbidden in Hana'ah? Mm -hmm. So the Gemara says, in, yes, there's a moment before you break the neck where it already becomes forbidden in benefit. Okay? I've heard that there was a, a moment in time where it becomes an Egla Rufa and forbidden in benefit, even before you break the neck. I forgot what that moment in time was. Not in but the chevra, you know, the the, the the students in the base medrash sort of have you know have concluded or came to a consensus to say you When you bring it down into the wadi, that gives it the status. So actually, yes, by coming with the base and doing the whole ritual, that gives it the status. And by the way, that makes it easier to understand why the breaking of the neck of a goat even. Because if there's something that precedes the breaking of the neck that gives it that status, you know, the base in bringing it down, so then we're sort of saying that therefore that's an egg la rufa. If you do the right ritual and break the neck, the whole thing is tahor. But if you it dies, it's a nevela and it's tame. But it's also an egg la rufa because you brought it into the wadi. And therefore I need a pasuk to tell me even that nevela, the fat, is going to be tahor. Okay? And the question of Ragirmia was once you say that by an egg la rufa, if you do the right ritual, it is tahor, even if you break its neck. What is the story if I use a goat for the Egla Rufa, according to Rebbe Mayer? And we're going to have to go to bed tonight not knowing the answer to that question. Okay, how do I But it's interesting that the, the, 